Welcome to Business Leader Breakthroughs, where we help unlock the potential in you, your teams, and your business. I'm your host, Ryan Castle, along with Dr. Mike Ashby. We share insights, experiences, and stories on achieving breakthrough success in business and life. To learn more, click the link in the episode show notes or go to thebreakthrough.co. Now let the breakthroughs begin. One of the things we've talked about bringing value to the audience is really an area that I guess we'd consider ourselves experts in, uh, but certainly about helping our business leaders' lives change for good. Uh, part of our purpose here at The Breakthrough and just digging in a little bit to some of the fundamental management skills that we mm. observe deliver real value for, for people in organisations when we take them through the training. So we're going to dive into um, a recently critical one, one that everyone says they don't have enough of yep everyone time. talks about but uh, yeah. never does anything about yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, i think i've i've asked mm, i don't know ten thousand people i reckon probably over my over my days here at the breakthrough yep. going who's ever left the office or the manufacturing plant or the location your construction site whatever your vibe it might be Who's ever left going, there's not another single thing I could do? Mm, mm. In that sample size of circa 10,000, <laughs> yet to have someone say, no, no, get to the end of that, it's all done, nothing else to do, yeah. it doesn't happen. Yeah. And my little version of that is to ask probably the same 10,000 people, possibly different, yeah. um, who here is busy? And we get a similar kind of 10,000 arms go up. Um, I guess we start from the point of view, time management, it's one of those absolutely standard things, people talk about it, it's a kind of a basic, we say, oh good, time management. Actually, most of us still do it pretty poorly. And most of us, if we're busy, then my argument would be we're not managing our time. And I know that when it starts to happen to me that I start to feel that level of busyness, I'm thinking, I'm not managing my time. So it's much more than just about kind of, you know, six minute blocks or whatever. And what, what's that feeling that creeps up on you when you're, you know, you do hit busy phase and you know you maybe lost some of that time management? What is, it, what is that feeling for you? I think it's similar to how the chicken feels when it's running around without its head. Right. <laughs> well, that's what I've been told anyway. I... Uh, when I'm really busy, I start to lose uh, perspective and I start to get a bit disorganised and I start second guessing myself and run around and end up doing little things, and usually badly and often twice. Yes. So it's kind of a, um, so, so actually time management is, is not so much about time. It's about energy and it's about attention. That's what it really comes down to. Okay. Tell us more. Well, I think that time management is, in our, in our program, because we start with the idea of mindfulness, mindful managers, what we call the active mindset, the active, the active pause, um, that's about using our brain in the moment, being present in the moment, present and engaged in the moment. And typically, time management is a really good way to do that. It's a really good vehicle, because most of the time, we actually just use our time unconsciously. We don't think about how we use our time. We wonder where it's gone. I think it's that one where you get to the end of the day. You go, "Wow, I've just been flat tack all day." Yeah. And someone goes, well, "What did you? What did you? What, did, what was what your did contribution? You what did you achieve? Yes. What was your big thing?" And you're like, Ooh, oh, "Where uh, was I? I, I? I know I feel like I hardly took a breath yeah. all day, yeah. but I actually probably couldn't yeah. tell you yeah. something that added value to myself, to my team, or to the business. I was just really busy. Yeah. I think that for me, that's one of those ones where it's a good uh, indicator that I'm a little out of control on the time side. It's an opportunity for mindfulness. It's also the product of a lack of mindfulness, and it's a product of other things that are happening, like you're not delegating enough, you're not creating some space, uh, you, are, you may be perfectioning, uh, you may be complexicating, there's all sorts of reasons. But what it amounts to is that you end up killing a whole lot of time. And the mistakes that people make are they use time till it's gone and then it's just not available for anything else. They treat time as renewable. Certainly as I've got older, I've become a big believer in reincarnation. I think to myself, oh, I'll get that <laughs> next time around. Yeah, yeah, no, that'll be fine. Uh, or they treat it as free. And, and of course, there's a huge opportunity cost to doing stuff now, like the low value stuff, which takes the time, steals the time, kills it, 
And as opposed to spending the time on the stuff you probably don't want to do, but you really should. Again, one of my favorite questions in seminars is say to people, how many of you have got something that you know you should be doing, but you're kind of avoiding, or you just don't want to make a start on yet? And always there's a bunch of hands of the honest people saying, you yeah, know, this. And so what we do with that is, again, we kill time around it rather than kind of grapple with it. So, you know, I think, I think none of us are starved for time. We all have the same amount of time. Somebody once pointed out that, you know, somebody like Bill Gates and I have exactly the same amount of time in front of us, right? The next second is the next second for both of us. It's really a question of what we do with it. It's really a question of how we prioritize. What do we, what do we regard as important? And the only difference really is that uh, Bill Gates earns about $1.6 million per second. In the next second, he's just is, wrecked not yeah, so much. Slight, slightly smaller. 1.6 is good. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so it is a great opportunity for mindfulness because when you, if you were to stop every time and say to yourself, what am I doing here? And pause and be present to what it is you're doing and what you're not doing, what you're not getting to, you would make a better choice. And that's what the active mindset is about, is to stop, pause, and make a choice. There are some things that we can do that we recommend that you do to kind of help you with this. And the, the first one is to limit your hours. And I, I know it sounds at one level, it's kind of, it sounds a bit bureaucratic, you know, kind of nine to five. Actually, that process of protecting your time will help you make better use of it. You know, it's that whole story about when you are about to, uh, uh, to go on holiday, you know? What do you do in those last few days, right? Very, very effective with your time. You get really clear on the things that must happen and the things that can wait until you yeah. get back. Very good at prioritizing, very focused, nail it. And that's because you're, you're mindful of the fact that you haven't got that much. And the same goes for our, our, you know, our day. Um, being regular and consistent with your working hours is a good way of making sure that you don't fall into that trap of, oh, I'll just do one more thing. The, the one more thing, my biggest, I'm not that great on punctuality. I work at it pretty hard. Am I? He's, he's laughing. Well, it's kind of laugh because it's uh, both an observation of you and a self-observation. Okay. I wouldn't say punctuality is our no, strong point for either of us. No. Uh, we'd like to explain it away as perfect management of just in time. Yes. Uh, but really, it's yeah. just uh, trying to put some nice words around uh, actually being in the yeah. wrong eyes and being on time is yeah. something we could both uh, yeah. develop. Yeah. I've, I've been told that there's nothing wrong with being early for something. I, I struggle with that. Uh, I would prefer to go with, the, oh, I'll just finish this one thing and then I'll go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Snap. Yeah, yeah. So, look, my, I like your analogy of the the holiday, going away on holiday. Yeah. But I think there's a much better analogy. One that, a, yeah, sticks, one that sticks in mind yeah. so much. I think we even have sticks. a poster. We, we have do. a poster of it, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we do. So what we're talking about is that we should, instead of kind of wasting our, our hours, we should treat those hours as precious. We re should regard them just as we'd regard that last piece of toilet paper because that's the one you're going to be very careful with how you use it, aren't you? Because there's no more. We'll just, just, let, we'll just yeah. let the audience kind of ponder that analogy. We just won't. Think about that. We don't need to probably explain it in any more detail. I'm sure their own imaginations I think, uh, will you know, take you can, into conclusion that's required. Yeah, yeah, extract yeah. all, everything you can from that yeah. metaphor. Just, yeah, take yeah. your time. The, the one that is really important for me around that, really the mindset of getting really clear that you have uh, a set time, a certain mm. amount of resource that you can use, is it really pushes your amazing subconscious computer into going, how do I solve the tasks, the challenges, the things I need to get done? How do I do that when the answer is not to work more? Yeah. yeah. The mindset yeah. that we yeah. so often go in is, oh, I've got more to do, I just need to do just work more, more hours I'll, yeah, I'll, right. I'll work after dinner, I'll work on the weekends, I'll come mm. into work early. You know, it's, you, you never ever finish what there is that could be done. No. So if you switch your mindset to, I'm gonna give it a set amount of resource, what is the very, very best way I can utilize that resource? Mm. You kick that subconscious into going, how else would I solve, mm. how else would I solve these challenges without using time? And there's kind of three dimensions to getting a, a job done or a project done. There's the time, there's the resource, and there's the scope. 
And if you say, well, I've got no more time and I've got the same amount of resource, then does the scope need to change? And it's probably, it's probably in that piece, either you can get some more resource in the form of get some help, ask for help, train somebody, delegate, etc., or you refine the scope. And what you're saying, and you're absolutely right, is you're probably going to end up going, what's the most, you know, I've only got so much time and so much resource and so much energy. What is the 80-20? What is the, and, and we do ask ourselves this question. A lot. A lot which is, what is the 20% of everything that's going to create 80% of the value? The 20% of inputs that create 80% of the value. And it always holds and it's, you know, sometimes it's kind of, sometimes it's a little bit variable. Um, I was recently, we were recently recording some modules and I didn't think they were good enough in what we'd done. And so I, uh, I kind of ripped them up and somebody said to me, oh, were you, you know, were you getting a bit perfectionist there? And I, no, no, it just hadn't got to the 20%. So 80-20 does not mean low quality. It means fit for purpose, fit for purpose. And the stuff that we'd done was not fit for purpose. It was at about 15%. So we went back and started again. Knowing that and thinking about it and exactly your point about if I've got no more time, no more resource, how can I solve this problem differently? Mm. That's really important. And thinking about it in the reverse, what are the twenty uh, percent of the things that are creating eighty percent of the work to be to be done? Yeah. And you know, yeah. very much depending on your yeah. role. But a, an example is there might be a very continuous customer query that ke- continues to come through, oh, yeah. which chews up more and more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So could we answer that in a better way? Could we have uh, better education for our customers? Could we yep. have them access a resource that they yep. could self-answer and self-help around that? Mm. Um, is there a bot that could be developed to answer that question? Is there a piece of friction in our sales process that we need yeah. to take out that could solve solve yeah. that? So instead of just answer, answering the same question for a different customer every day of the week, how do we avoid that question even coming up in the first yeah. place by redesigning or redeveloping something? Much better way to do it. And it attacks it at the source rather than the symptom. I suppose there's a couple of other uh, techniques or frameworks or, or, or ways that we think about things. We think about the productivity window and and setting ourselves a time to get those those big tasks done. It might be an hour of the day, the hour of the important, and that's the keep it free from appointments other than those that are really mission critical, but that's your hour to really work on stuff. And that limits your tendency to kind of perfectionism or procrastination. I think that requires also a bit of process. It requires yeah, you to yeah. have an understanding of how do you manage your inflow of tasks and, and yeah. to be done. How do you identify what would fit into that productivity window? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. What would be things that you delegate or delay or delete? Yeah. You know, some yeah, those, yeah. So, so building yeah. a bit of um, process around that and. Uh, Dermot Crowley, who we did a fantastic podcast around mm-hmm. some of those concepts mm-hmm. of managing your inbox, etc. If you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to listen to that one because he's got some yeah. great tips around how you manage that piece of the process. And I think part of that is about what we call the five magic minutes, and it's the most important meeting of the working day. It's the meeting you have with yourself, and that's where you go through. And we we do this as a discipline every day. Is okay. What are my priorities for the week? What am I doing today towards those priorities? What's important? What am I going to get done today? So it's kind of doing that whole urgent and important piece, which we which which we cover a bit later, but reminding ourselves about what is the most important thing to get done today. If you only got one thing done, what is it going to be? That's your that's your priority. So, Mike, where's a good place for us to start? So uh, five five magic minutes in the yeah. morning, start the planning yeah. planning process. Yeah. Is there a location, a format, a uh, place that we should do that? What's best practice? Yeah, I used to, um, as a matter of, of habit, just stop at a cafe on my way to work, uh, have a cup of coffee and kind of think about the day and get clear about that. It's important to remember that time management is as much about energy management. Yes. And, uh, you know, time and energy kind of go together. They're kind of very critical resources. I think um, making sure we take regular breaks, especially when we're working at long periods and big stretches. And, you know, the Pomodoro technique is every 25 minutes, take a break, stand up, stretch your shoulders and all of that kind of stuff. That's, that's really good at, if you're having to work on big stuff. If, you're, if your day is made up of lots and little bits and pieces, it's important to check in with your energy level around how kind of whirlwindy are you starting to feel? You know, we'll talk about that in another module, but 
uh, where the world is, is you're hurtling from meeting to meeting, task to task. If you're feeling like you're, that you're running, it's time to stop. Pause, think. Yeah. And take some control back. Yeah. Like if you are allowing people to book you in back-to-back -back meetings from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., yeah. then you actually have no one else to uh, hold at fault but yourself. Yep. Yep. You actually do need to take control of your own time management. You yeah. go, I do need to schedule some breaks in here so they go in my calendar, they're not movable. Yep. Again, some things around that is really, really important. What, one of the things that, um, that I often do when meeting people who want to perhaps meet with me and introduce themselves is give them just half an hour. How many times have we met people for an hour and they spend 56 and three quarter minutes talking about themselves and how wonderful they are and why we should, I don't know what, with them and three minutes talking about, you know, the potential for cooperation. I have absolutely found that if we, if we limit it to half an hour, I've got half an hour for a cup of coffee, then the, you know, the, uh, the fig jam, the I'm good, just ask me, stops then and run our merry way and I've gained half an hour. Mm. And I tend to take that a step further. I'll often suggest uh, I meet with someone for 15 minutes on a phone call yeah. first, yeah. Uh, get a sense of what it is we're both trying right. to achieve out of getting and meeting together and making sure there's some common ground before I even commit nice. the, the half an hour. It, time, time management is one of those places where you can invest a little bit of time to, in, to recoup a whole lot more. You know, a little bit of time planning a little bit of time prepping for a meeting, uh, a little bit of time thinking about your priorities, actually gains you a whole lot of time, which you would otherwise have wasted, you would otherwise have lost. Mm. Again, all of those things are exercises in, in what we would call the active mindset. Absolutely. A great example of the energy management piece was working with an organisation last week. Uh, we were talking about this very thing, managing managing time, and one of the uh, people in the collab had a really good insight. She said, my productivity when it was definitely in the morning, I'm, like she was yeah. at 10 to 12, she said <coughs> that's where I try to put the stack of my heavy lifting work that yeah, takes a lot great. of my brain Perfect. function. Yep. And she said, what I like to do is I actually like to have my meetings in the afternoons mm. because uh, I can feed off the energy of the other people in the room. Oh, okay. now, clearly an extrovert gets their energy by being around other people. Uh, you know That wouldn't work so well for an introvert who probably needs some alone time to re-energize, yeah. but yeah. it was good I'm, observation. I shouldn't even be here. You shouldn't. <laughs> it was good observation and awareness for her yeah. of going, yeah. my, my heavy lifting's good in the morning. Yeah. I can I can uh, feed off the energy of others in the afternoon, so that's when I try to do my meetings. Yeah, well, great again, you know, great window into self-awareness. I know for myself, my highest energy is till lunchtime. My uh, biggest excitement is what's for lunch. And I have a slow period after lunch until about 3, 3.30, but then I can go 3.30 till 7. I don't, I choose to kind of finish as part of my, limit my hours and have a life, etc. cetera. But um, they are my energy peaks and drops. Knowing that is really important in thinking about how I schedule stuff. Um, and, you know, because a lot of my work is, is big project, yes. intense hours on, hours on end is keeping big chunks free. Yep. Yeah. Spot on. Some great insights there. So your takeaway from this one, uh, start with that five minutes of meeting mm -hmm. magic right in the morning. That meeting with yourself, get really clear on where your big contribution is for the for the day. Uh, the other thing it helps with, I think, is other things. When other things start coming at you during the day, you have the opportunity to reflect and go, is that more or less important mm -hmm. on that? Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more about managing priorities in a future episode. Thanks for joining us today. If any of you have great tips or insights on how managing time has worked well for you uh, would appreciate your feedback added to the comments and we will uh, see you on the next episode thanks for joining us today cheers bye bye